I have a couple of friends who use this as a meal replacement. When they're really trying to lose a lot of weight and they go on this like starvation diet, this is their lifesaver. <laughs> no wonder they have to put it in this opaque tube. It's just so disgusting. Hey guys, it's Chen. So you might or might not have come across zero calorie foods. And a lot of people have asked me like, are these foods really healthy? It sounds really good. I mean, zero calories mean zero guilt, right? Maybe, maybe not. What a lot of people don't know is that food manufacturers are allowed to say that their foods are zero calories if it is less than five calories per serving. So they may not be zero calories, but they are really low in calories. Now I'm going to be sharing some interesting things about zero calorie foods that you might find useful. I've never tried some of these products before, so I'm really excited to see how they taste. Here I have Japanese jellies. I have the Orihiro Konyaku jelly that is honey apple flavoured. And here I also have the Musket grape flavoured jellies from the brand called Parami. So the main selling point of this is obviously the zero calories. So I'm gonna start with this jelly. It has aspartame and that's a very popular artificial sweetener that they use in all these diet sodas. Gardenia dye, SF basically a ton of things that I cannot pronounce. And here I have the Konyaku jelly. So Konyaku is a very popular diet product. I have actually covered it in a previous video where I had the miracle noodles and those are meant to be zero calorie noodles. They are made from Konyaku jelly. So this is basically jelly in a little tubing. It contains erythrol, another very common artificial sweetener that they use in diet sodas and diet sauces. Honestly, the only natural thing here is apple juice. Apple juice is not zero calories. Apple juice is sugar. But it could be that the quantity of apple juice is so little that it's less than 5 calories. And that is what qualifies this as a zero calorie product. Looking at the nutritional information, I was trying to decipher the nutrition facts on the labels. Unfortunately, a lot of them are in a different language. So it was a bit difficult. I had to go online to check out how many carbs are in each of these products. And it does say that for this grape fruit jelly, it is 14.76 grams for the entire cup. And for the red one, it is 8.7 grams of carbs. So that kind of got me thinking, how come there is so many carbs, but it can still be qualified as a zero calorie product because one gram of carb is essentially four calories so technically like something like, like this would be about at least 32 calories so how is it that there's still carbs in this and there are still calories in this but they can still market themselves as a zero calorie product so i looked online and i found that these carbs are probably from the artificial sweeteners like erythrol and aspartame and these artificial sweeteners contain a lot less calories per gram of carbohydrate for example, for erythrol, it's 0.2 calories per gram of carbs, whereas for your normal carbohydrates, it is 4 calories. Because the calories are so low for these artificial sweeteners, the carbs are pretty negligible. Just looking from the packaging, it's not something I would consider as healthy, but I'm going to try it. It's actually really tasty and actually not as sweet as your regular jellies, which I personally appreciate. I have a couple of friends who use this as a meal replacement. When they're really trying to lose a lot of weight and they go on this like starvation diet, this is their lifesaver. They'll just take this out of the fridge and they start eating it because it is zero calories. So they're pretty much eating nothing. Healthy, I don't know. I, I don't want to judge, uh, but I don't think that this should be a meal replacement. Okay, so I'm gonna try this out. <laughs> it tastes really weird. Like a very, very sweet and sour, pungent smelling drink. And it tastes like the apples are a bit rotten. Okay, I'll just show you guys what the jelly looks like. No wonder they have to put it in this opaque tube. It's just so disgusting. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that goo. <laughs> On a whole, my thoughts on these two jellies. For the green one, the taste was actually okay. If I was really craving a dessert and this was in the kitchen, then I would go for this. Just with these two products, both of them really don't provide you any nutritional benefits. Um, and between having the grape and the apple, zero calorie um, snacks versus having the real grapes and real apples, I would go for the natural fruit. Here I have zero calorie drinks. I have this ice green tea from the brand called Steez. We have the Genki Forest Soda Sparkling Water. And we also have Coke No Sugar. 
I'm starting off with the Genki Forest Soda Sparkling Water. And Genki Forest is actually a very popular brand in China. They've started to create all these zero calorie and diet drinks because you know people are starting to realize that soda is really unhealthy for you and they're looking at these for healthier alternatives. Reading like the ingredients list, it has water, erythrol, which is again a very common item seen in all of these zero calorie products because that is the source of sweetness. And then it also contains purple carriage juice concentrate, red grape juice, which is the flavour of this drink, and sucralose, which is another, again, very popular artificial sweetener. Looking at the nutritional value, it says it has 3.8 grams of carbs per 100 milliliters, and this entire bottle is about 480 ml. For this entire bottle, it works up to 18 grams of carbs. These 18 grams of carbs are from the sugar alcohols, the artificial sweeteners. You don't calculate that the same as a regular carbohydrate. So even though these artificial sweeteners do contain calories, they are still under 5 calories per serving and for that, they can still be considered 0 calories. This reminds me of the FNN fruit sodas. It tastes like sparkling water that has a few drops of grape flavouring. It's not a bad tasting drink. From a taste point of view, I recommend going for this just because it's just not too sweet and not as sweet as your regular fruit sodas. However, on sodas in general, this is not something that I would recommend as a healthy product because the amount of artificial sweeteners in this, it just there's just no way I can qualify this as a health product. My general gripe with artificially sweetened drinks is that it doesn't solve the root of your issue. If you are very addicted to all these very sweet drinks, it's just that you have a very high propensity to eat a lot of sugar. The thing about sugar is that it is highly addictive. The more you have it, the more your body craves it. So the really the only way for you to limit your sugar intake in the long run is to reduce it uh, or cut it out completely because slowly over time, you do train your taste buds and your bodies to crave the sugar a lot less. So that's why I feel that with all these alternatives, when you're trying to, you know, trick your body into, into thinking that this is sugar when actually it's low calories, um, I don't think that that's the healthiest way forward because you're not curing the inherent addiction. For me, right, I think a great alternative to if I wanted like a fruity water and I was bored of just drinking plain water, I would like cut up some fruits, I'll put some lemon in my water and that would nicely flavour my drink and that would give me like a low calorie drink option. Here I have the Steez Zero Calorie Iced Green Tea. It says here it has water, natural flavour, lemon juice, it does contain erythrol which is an artificial sweetener, green tea and stevia. Now stevia Stevia is a bit different from your artificial sweetener. Stevia is considered a natural sweetener. There's also nutvia, monk fruit, but I think between natural sweeteners and artificial sweeteners, I would prefer to have a product with natural sweeteners just because um, I feel that with the artificial sweetener, it's like chemicals that you're putting into your body. With the stevia, you know, it's still from a natural source, like even like honey. The natural sweeteners are definitely the better of the two evils. The thing about green tea as well is that green Green tea is already considered zero calories because there are calories in green tea but it's, it's very little. It's like ayataka, that can still be considered zero calories. But I think the draw of this is that it's flavoured with other natural flavours like raspberry. So it's meant to be a low calorie fruit tea option that is also sweet. There is this like artificial aftertaste in this tea and I think it probably comes from the artificial sweetener. I do taste a very light raspberry. So it's not as sweet as your regular like raspberry teas or iced tea with a lot of sugar. I mean, I would really rather just get green tea and then put some raspberries inside and enjoy the drink. And I think that that would taste a lot lighter and more refreshing. Than this. But however, if I was craving a sweetened iced tea, then maybe this can be an option. Here I have Coca-Cola No Sugar on the nutrition facts. It's zero everything, it just has 19 grams of sodium, it has carbonated water, caramel colour, phosphoric acid, sweeteners, preservatives, flavouring, sodium citrate, and caffeine. All these other products, they at least had the fruit sugars or natural fruit concentrates. This is just pure 
are addictive chemicals. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I can totally understand how and why this is very addictive. Coca-Cola tastes good, but it's, it's just like so bad for you. So if you are addicted to Coca-Cola and you must have Coca-Cola almost every day, switching to something like this does make a bit of a difference, but it doesn't necessarily solve the inherent issue, which is that you are just addicted to Coca-Cola. So my overall thoughts of these zero calorie drinks is that they can be considered healthier than the originals just by the fact that they are lower in sugar and lower in calories. So, and if you are somebody who's trying to cut your calories and you are craving like a sweet drink on a hot day, then these could be good options for you. However, I would say that some of them are a lot better and you should look at the ingredients list. For example, something like this has a shorter ingredients list and with ingredients that you can understand. Whereas something like your Coca-Cola, has a long ingredients list of just nothing but chemicals with absolutely no nutritional benefit to you whatsoever. A better alternative for you would be to actually drink soda water with mint leaves and raspberries and lemons. I know they're not as sweet, but they can still satisfy a level of sugar cravings and they can still be really refreshing for you. And trust me, you know, for all those people who are addicted to sugar and who constantly need sugar, the only way to train yourself to reduce your sugar intake is to over time just not have them because it does train your taste buds to crave sugar a lot less. And the thing about these artificial sweeteners is they can cause you to have even worse sugar cravings because it still does spike your insulin. Like for example right now, I just drank all of these drinks and I'm, I'm so hungry. Over here, I have calorie-free ranch dressing from Walden Farms and it says zero grams net carbs, zero calories and fat-free. Sounds like a diet dream come true. It just makes you wonder what actually goes into this dressing. And if you read the ingredients list, you have a really long list of ingredients that you really can't pronounce and don't even understand. I actually came across this brand many years ago when I was dieting for bodybuilding and I had to eat a very low calorie diet. It's just that your food was so tasteless and gross. So all you needed was something flavorful to like make your salad good. I remember there was this Walden Farm maple syrup that was sweet and it was a zero calorie uh, maple syrup. So all these just fit very well into to my low calorie bodybuilding diet. And I still remember like the maple syrup, it was sweet and nice, but it did have this kind of like artificial salty aftertaste. You can just tell that it's a bit different from the original. So I don't know about this and I'm gonna try it out. So I have some salad over here and I'm gonna try out this ranch dressing. It actually smells really good. I think cause like the onion puree is very strong. So texture-wise, it is not as thick as your normal ranch dressing. But I would say that I am pleasantly surprised by the flavour of this because I thought it was going to be very diluted and watery, which is the impression I get from a lot of zero-calorie foods. But this is actually really tasty. So I think if you were to compare this ranch dressing to your store-bought like ranch dressing that's full fat or full sugar, full cream, obviously this can be arguably healthier. If you are somebody who really hates eating vegetables and the only way for you to eat a raw salad is to have some form of taste, then between this and the normal ranch dressing, I would definitely go for this. Personally, if it was between Walden Farms ranch dressing and having olive oil and lemon juice over my salad, I'd rather go with the olive oil. Just because even though the olive oil is higher in calories, it is filled with good fats that I know is gonna like nourish me. This is filled with a lot of weird chemicals that I don't know what I'm putting into my body. So I I think between both, I'd rather go with the olive oil. Before I go, these are my go-to zero calorie products. I have yellow mustard and sriracha sauce. Now, I am personally not a huge fan of sauces or dressings because I feel that there are a lot of hidden sugars and flavorings in these sauces. But if I do have to flavor my foods with anything, it would usually be with things like mustard and sriracha sauce. A lot of people actually don't know this, but yellow mustard is a zero calorie food item. It is really like zero zero grams of fat, zero grams of carbs, zero grams of sugars because what is in the yellow mustard sauce is white vinegar, water, mustard seed, bran salt, turmeric and paprika. So as you can tell, there aren't any artificial sweeteners in these sauces. You know, you generally know what is going into your foods which are these herbs. With a lot of these sauces, there is still sodium and I reckon a lot of the sodium here comes from the vinegar and it's 60 mg of sodium per teaspoon of this. So you can still use this but in moderation. You can't just like 
you know, douse a lot of this on your foods because it still does contain sodium. And the daily recommended intake for sodium is 2000 mg. So you want to make sure that you're not getting a lot of these sodiums from sauces. You want to get your sodiums from natural food products. And here is the sriracha chili sauce. In the ingredients list, it has chili, sugar, garlic, and it contains xanthan gum. Xanthan gum is like a thickening agent that you will find in a lot of these diet products. So that's something that you want to look out for. However, over Overall, the ingredients this isn't so long and it is still a zero calorie food item and it's not too sweet. With a lot of your chilli sauces, they do contain a higher amount of added sugars. But with the sriracha sauce, there are no added sugars. In fact, there is less than 1 gram of sugar. Only the sodium, the sodium is 70 mg. So like I said with the mustard, just don't put too much of it. However, these compared to flavouring your meats with barbecue sauce and mayonnaise or tata sauce, you know, this contains 0 grams of fat, are very low in calories. So 100% diet approved. The thing about these is that they are affordable affordable, accessible because you can get them at supermarkets and these can be products that you might already have at home. Um, they're not marketed as zero calorie products or anything like that. You don't have to buy them from a special diet section. Um, these are just, you know, everyday products that you didn't know were zero calories. My overall thoughts is that zero calories does not necessarily mean that a food is healthy. Be a bit more skeptical and wary on what's on the ingredients list because it's usually filled with a bunch of chemicals and artificial sweeteners that you don't know, don't understand and don't know what you're putting to your body. That's the danger of marketing diet products in my opinion just because something says it is zero calories or low calories or no added sugar or no preservatives you know it's everywhere all these labels are everywhere but as a consumer we have to be cautious and wary about it because it doesn't necessarily mean that it is good for you personally if you ask me if you should go for the zero calorie option as compared to let's say like a, a natural fruit item or to the natural teas i rather you go for the natural version just because even though the calories are higher it does contain more nutritional benefits for you for my savory foods i rather flavor it with the natural herbs and spices as compared to the processed sauces because the herbs and spices are low in calories as well that's all I have for you in today's episode and I hope this has made you a more discerning and informed consumer. Beware whenever you see zero calories on a food packaging because a lot of the times you don't know what is in the product. And if you're looking for a way to eat more healthily, then go and check out the No Sweat app. Over there, I have Asian-inspired healthy recipes that are simple and easy to make. I've also just included a 28-day weight loss plan over there and this is perfect for anyone who wants to go on a more structured eating plan. I've also included a vegetarian option. So if you're looking to, you know, eat well, get healthier, um, include more good foods into your diets, not necessarily zero calorie foods, then go and check it out. Over there, you'll also find personalized workouts that are tailored to your fitness goals. You'll get one-on-one -on -one fitness assessments from me. And yes, I do personally respond to each and every single one of you. You get access to live chats, live stream workouts, and even exclusive invites to our meet and greet sessions. The app is free to download. And once you download the app, you'll get your first seven days for free. And after which you have the option of signing up for a one year, three month, or one month plan. And if you sign up for one year, you also get a set of no sweat resistance bands for free. We also have a merch store where you can get supplements for your home workout. So head on over there and check it out. Lastly, with all our other videos, please remember to give this one a thumbs up, click the subscribe button and hit the little bell so you never miss a notification every time we post a new video. Or you can download the Click Network app to watch our videos over there. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye!